Okay, here we are in library mode, and we have 431 images to go through that we need to edit down to ideally about 35 to 50 to show our client. Now, I know a lot of people will go through and do one image at a time and flip through and choose images. Yes, this one. No, that one. Yes, no. And they might go through and then be like, wait, do I want this one or that one? Or was it this one or that one? You get the idea. It can be really exhausting and take a lot of time. Our goal for this initial edit is to be really, really quick. We want kind of gut reaction choices to images that speak to us and that we are proud of and want to show the client. We do not want to show the client five images that are very similar. We want to show them the best image. How we're going to do our calling is we're going to actually do two passes of calling. We're just going to go through the first round right now, which is the initial call, which is really choosing our favorite images. And how I do that is I look at a bunch of images together on the screen so that I can see them all side by side so the best image immediately jumps out at me. So I will pull up six to eight images in grid mode, which is the letter N for a keyboard shortcut. And we can look at all of them together and then quickly see which ones might jump out at us as images we might potentially want to show the client. And this is just quick and dirty. We're just choosing the images that speak to us. There does not have to be, we only choose one image per page. We do not have to choose three images per page. Sometimes you might see three or four on there that you like. Sometimes you might not choose any on the particular page that you pull up. If you'd like to see more room for your images to see them larger, you can close this column on the left and this column on the right in order to have more room to view your images. I'm working on a 27 inch iMac and the screen ends up being a little bit too big for me and I have to move my head around too much. So I actually prefer to have my images in a little bit of a smaller area for this part of the process. And we're just gonna choose some of the ones that we think might be our favorite images that we're gonna to wanna to show the client. Comparing them to each other, but not worrying too much about exactly how many you're choosing. Don't go through them and think that you only need to choose a few from certain settings from your session because with our round two of calling, we will really narrow it down to the best of the best. We're gonna continue going through till we go through all 431 images, choosing our favorite images. And again, when you have them all side by side, it's pretty easy to select your favorite. Sometimes when you're taking images of people and their pet, you might wanna open those images up quickly just to make sure everybody's making a good face and they look great in both those images, so we'll just choose one. Don't overthink which ones you're choosing. Our job is to pre-select these images so that our clients see only the best of the best. We don't want to have them have to look at three images that are very similar to figure out which one they like the best because that's a lot of mental energy that's gonna be taken up in the sales room with them deciding which images they like the best instead of deciding how they want to display the images that they love. So we want to take this hard part out of the equation for them and really narrow down to the best of the best. And we also want to save time because we want to do other things other than sit in front of the computer. This particular method allows us to do it much faster. I found that once I started implementing this that my calling time decreased dramatically. And I also didn't procrastinate about calling nearly as much as I used to because I used to be so overwhelmed with having to go through all these images that I would just put it off and put it off and I didn't want to deal with it. But this makes it much easier because you can compare quickly and there's not too much pressure to go through them the first round. So here we're looking through, we're gonna again choose some of our favorites and continue through the whole session. I find that it takes me approximately 90 minutes after import to call, edit, and export the images until they're ready for the client to be seen for the sales session. So that's about what I budget when I edit my images is about 90 minutes per session in order to prep them for the sales session. And again, remember you don't need to choose something from every single page. If there's no image on that page that speaks to you, just keep moving and don't worry about it. This is just a quick way for us to go through our images, choose our favorites so that they get down to a more manageable level 
to make our final choices. You can see some of my shots were over and underexposed in those last few images that I was going through, and that's okay. I do shoot raw, so I'm able to pull some of those de details of those underexposed images out, and I'm also able to save some of those overexposed images. And when you find that you do this in a session, please don't beat yourself up. It happens to all of us. Uh, sometimes the dog's doing something great and super cute, and we hurry up and change to capture it, and we forget to change our settings. Sometimes we just forget to change our settings, and it's okay. I do periodically try to remember to check in on the back of my camera just to see what's going on back there, because then you can notice that, oh, I really need to adjust something. I forgot to do something. I forgot to change my settings when we moved this location. So I do tend to look at the back of my camera fairly often during sessions for that reason, because I do move a lot, around a lot, and I don't want to cause myself extra work post-processing, so I would like to try to get it as close to, as possible in the camera. I will also always just take a test shot as they're getting ready. You can see this one right here was a little bit overexposed. Check the camera, turn it down a little bit to a proper exposure, so I didn't have that bright white barn right behind them. That I, It would be easier to pull the shadows up in these images than to bring that white back. Sometimes I do pull up more than six. It really just depends on the images. Sometimes if I have to see up close faces, again, I'll pull it up large so that I can see and then just make some decisions and move along. The name of the game here is quick decisions. Now as you're going through and you get to the action shots, it's important to make sure they're in focus. So I can then quickly just double click and since I imported those one-to-one -one previews, I don't have to wait for Lightroom to render this image. It just automatically opens and it's quick and painless and I'm not spending time sitting at my computer waiting for your computer. If you're sitting at your computer waiting for your computer, change your workflow so that you don't have to do that. You can see this image is a little bit out of focus so we're not going to choose this one. Instead, that one looks much better. We're going to keep that one. That one is obviously not in focus. We can close that image out so you can see the other one's a little bit larger. This little X right down here does not reject it. It does not do anything other than close it out of this grid view window so that you can see the other images a little bit larger. I find it very helpful to do sometimes. So you can see we can go through these images pretty quickly. We're already over three quarters of the way through. 431 images. This is much quicker than going through one at a time and having to make decisions. You can see when you look at all these together, the good ones just jump right out at you. And also when I'm going through these images, I also can compare the lighting in some of them. You can see we're going from an area of shade into an area with some direct sun. Some of these images down here it would be a little bit harder to create a final image. And I can crop it in a little bit and then clone out some of that really bright grass. But again, it's just something to consider when you're looking through and you say, oh, well this one has a lot of bright grass, but you know, everybody looks good in this one too. Or let's go check out these ones over here. So I did check that one because I liked that one a little bit better. I did pick it. But oh, over here, look, it's a very similar image, but it's not going to have nearly as much editing needed for it. So we will choose that one. We have to select one with that little white beard. I already chose one that I really liked. None of those are better, so we're going to keep moving on. Now again here, we have a pretty good look on his face here. We also have a very similar image here. But do you see how close the grass is to his tail? That's going to be challenging to edit. I'm going to have to extend the canvas in Photoshop. Where if I choose this one, I have plenty of grass underneath him. It's going to be easier to edit. So I'm going to choose that one. All of these things you should be thinking about as you go through your images in the calling process. I don't love any of those. I don't love any of these and I have them walking through the field together from the beginning of the session, so I don't need to choose any of those. So we're going to move on. Remember, you don't have to choose something on every little section. You really want to choose just the best of the best. And there you go. We've gone through our first round of calling. In the next video, I'll show you how I do my second round.